Chicago, like most big cities, has its fair share of unsolved crime. And in most of these cases, somebody saw or heard something. It could be a suspicious person, a car driving away from the scene, or simply overhearing somebody talking about the case. With your help, we can put these criminals behind bars where they belong. Here in Chicago, we have too many unsolved murders. We need your help. In these cases, the police department is only as strong as the citizens that get involved. Oftentimes, all the detectives need is a tip, a start. Somebody to call in and say, I saw something. Any little information that you know can be the impetus to solve the entire case. On tonight's episode, we'll be featuring the case of 24-year-old Anthony T.J. Green. On July 11, 2013, T.J. Green, the funny guy who made everybody smile, was working at his family's hot dog restaurant. He decided to take a break to enjoy a popsicle with his two nieces when an individual walked past him, turned around, and fired a gun, killing T.J. instantly. Here's his story. Growing up was never any problems. He was always a good kid. On the day he was born, he, his dad was so proud, he just thought that he was going to be a basketball player because of his big feet. He was a very outgoing uh, young man. He, he loved to entertain. He loved to talk. He loved to tell stories. He didn't have any fear of anything. He would jump off of anything, just leap off the stairs, uh, leap off the a car and you know, you just say, I can throw my arms out as dad and jump TJ, he would jump. TJ was funny. He pretty much always just stayed in the house and he loved video games. He loved video games and PlayStations. He could just take it out of the pack and just play it. He even had a video game where it was all about semi trucks and he would um, drive that, those trucks on that game all day long. That's what he was playing a lot, you know, he had the PlayStation and the Xbox, so he was a gadget guy, you know, that's, he liked electronics. Mother's Day, I want to say it was 95, he was hit by uh, a car and it was a hit and run and uh, it was like a couple blocks from the house and ever since that accident, I think that kind of left TJ a little slow. You know, he never really regained being the way that he was prior to that. TJ was never the type to get in any trouble. He didn't hang with bad people. One day, I was walking down the street, you know, it was me and my brother, and we were at my grandma's house, and, um, you know, the neighborhood kids were walking down the street as well. And there was this fight, you know, and uh, my brother, you know, kind of kept me away from it. He tried to be my shield to make sure that I stayed out of trouble. TJ has three siblings, and he always tried to play the big brother role. He didn't want nobody saying anything about them. It was always he had to be the big brother. He was working at the mall for a while, and he thought that was the greatest job ever, and then he, uh, he was working at Pizza Hut for the longest, and then before that, he was working at Denny's. He loved that job. He was very passionate about all of his job. As TJ was getting older, he always talked about being a truck driver. We had a neighbor that, uh, that was a truck driver. His name was Mr. Norman, and all the time, he used to take TJ on a, on a ride in a truck, you know, and one day, uh, TJ came in and got me. He's like, come on, uh, let's, let's go get on the truck. And we're all just riding around, and my brother had the biggest smile on his face. That just was, that was his dream. His passion was driving. I taught him to drive at an early age. 
when he has his license and was able to do it on his own, I know I can trust him driving, he can trust himself. So he was a very good driver. He wished he could do something for the city because of all the crime going on. And he just wanted to do something to kind of help the city. He was mentioning about um, young guys moving here from the city of Chicago and, 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 and the crime rate going up even more because of that. He made a Facebook status about, you know, putting the guns down and when are we all going to work this out and, you know, just, just kind of coming together as a community. He just thought that violence was just wrong. Just wrong. He wanted to be able to do something about it. And that was right before he got killed. July 11, 2013, at around 5.50 p.m., Gary Police 911 Center received a call in reference to a gunshot victim. When officers arrived, they found Anthony Green, who had a parent gunshot wound to the back of the head, and paramedics at that time could do nothing to save Mr. Green. Have you been in an accident? Have you been the victim of discrimination or had your rights violated? Have you been injured? If so, the lawyers at Hale Law would love to talk to you. We offer a free consultation. Call me, Andy Hale, 312-870-6926. 312-870-6926. I look forward to talking with you about your case. On uh, July 11, 2013, Anthony Green was working as a cook at a hot dog stand at 5279 Broadway. The owner, which was his cousin, was taking an order from a gentleman at walk-in. She's recognized him several times before in the past. There were three guys in the restaurant and they all ordered. When my younger son came in, he looked over at the three guys because the shooter looks just like his best friend. The three guys that were in there, they were eating and doing their thing, and I saw what I thought was my friend, so I you know, was gonna say hi to him. And then as he looked at me, I kinda noticed that, you know, he, he, it wasn't my friend, you know, by the distinct tattoo he had over his eye. He frequent that business and ordered the same type of food. He ordered some food, he ordered actually, this is very important, um, two hot dogs uh, with fries, and he likes barbecue sauce on his fries. These three guys up here don't seem right. They seem like they're onto something. They seem suspicious or, or whatever. I was talking to TJ, I'm like, hey, yeah, man, I, this is what I want to order. And then I went back to the, the back half of the building, which was a, a recording studio. He went to the back and actually TJ fixed him a hot dog, a Polish, I think it was, and some fries. And then my food was ready, so my brother TJ brought it back. And then for about, you know, five or 10 minutes, he kind of just talked to me about how his day was going. And he's like, yeah, I'm not really having the best day. And I feel like if there was anything that he sensed was wrong, he would have let me know at that moment. But he didn't do that. He just kind of like, you know, abruptly left and um, went back to work. That's when he came back up and grabbed the popsicle and went and sat outside with my two nieces. He walked outside to sit with his nieces at the table. The owner was watching at the counter looking outside and noticed that that same gentleman she's seen in there with that same order, that same tattoo, walked past Anthony and the girls, turned around where he was facing at the back of Anthony, and as she put it, did a pose. And the guy just came up behind him and just shot him in the back of the head. One guy was standing there with his mouth wide open, one of the three dropped the pop and all of them ran. I was up front eating and all I saw was my cousin kind of just rush out of the door. So just in that moment, I just couldn't kind of sense something was wrong. I dropped everything I was doing, and I ran up to the front with him to kind of just make sure everything was going on. And then there he was, just sitting in a chair, just 
lifeless. Gary Dispatch received a call of a man uh, possibly shot. When officers arrived, there was a man in, uh, I believe, the outside chair of the business, and uh, he was deceased. I, I was the one that had to call my mom. She was out of town. I said, hey, mom, you know, TJ had just been shot in the head. She's just like, what? And I, she dropped the phone. That is a call, and that is a feeling that I don't wish on nobody. Even to this day, I can still hear my son DeAndre saying, Mom, TJ just got shot in the head. I cannot get past it. My niece called me. She just said, Uncle Tony, can you get down here to the shop? TJ's been shot in the head. You know, I, I'm like lost for direction. I don't know which way to turn, what to do. Do I stop? Do I, what do I do? Our patrol officers immediately coordinated off the scene to keep everybody out of a crime scene. We jump in the car and he brings me here and that was just the longest ride ever. A few minutes later, a police, police officer comes over and he tells me, your son is deceased. Gary 911 Center received the call and Gary police officers responded to 5279 Broadway in reference to a gunshot victim. Upon their arrival, they found a male black sitting in outside patio chairs outside a hot dog business. That individual was later identified to be Anthony Green. And at that point, I went and I just started ministering to the whole crowd that was on the corner. And I let them know that the person who did this is forgiven right here, right now. For me to not forgive him, would mean that you not only took my son's life, but you took mine too. Because to walk around with unforgiveness is to walk around bitter. It was cowardly to, you know, kind of walk up to him while he's sitting down talking to my cousins and shoot him in the back of the, head, of, the, of the head. It's something that I wouldn't wish on nobody. I just haven't been able to get past that phone call. The family that owned the business was in shock. It's, I mean, obviously it's their relative and they seen what happened. It's taken everything for me not to stroke out. I wasn't eating, I wasn't sleeping. I felt like I couldn't grieve properly the entire week until he was buried. And after that, then I was able to properly grieve. I took a lot of time off work and I left the country. <laughs> uh, but I was able to grieve after that. Not a day that goes by that I don't think about my brother. It's just a sad, sad situation. My son out there, DeAndre, I'm, he's just a lot of anger, you know, because he was there. He was there when it happened, so. It's just a shame that you know, he's gone. There was an investigation reference to the crime scene itself to look for evidence. There was some physical evidence gathered. Um, like I said, there was three individuals, but there was only one shooter. And the way it sounds is the other two might have not have had an idea what the third one was going to do, but they knew each other. Some of the evidence we gathered, we were able to obtain some DNA that came back to the napkin. Obviously, afterwards, we had what's called a CODIS hit. So this person has been in the system. Uh, that person is not the shooter. We have a picture of that person. We know for a fact it is not the shooter, but it is possibly the, the, one of the other two guys that was with the shooter. And I believe that we can come up with a name on this individual 
um, she will be able to pick them out of a lineup with no problem. In the beginning, I would always keep the door closed. Uh, but like I said, with the grace of God and time, I've, I've been able to, I can go in the room now and it doesn't affect me like it used to, but it's always, always like he's there. My brother's death affected my family. We were pretty close knit. And then right after it happened, everybody dispersed, you know. I try not to go around them for holidays because it's just like I'm expecting to see him walk in. So I just stay away. He was killed on July 11th and my sister was, her, her birthday is July 12th. And so it's gonna forever be with her. June 23rd, 2013 at 12.50 p.m. He wrote on Facebook, I love Gary. It's home, but I don't want a bloodbath. We already have Chicago killing people every day. I wish I can do something to stop this nonsense, but I can't do it alone. I want to do something to take our streets back and say enough is enough. I'm sick of this. Now he's murdered not even a month later. He always kept a smile on his face. I don't want no one else to have to go through this. Have you been in an accident? Have you been the victim of discrimination or had your rights violated? Have you been injured? If so, the lawyers at Hale Law would love to talk to you. We offer a free consultation. Call me, Andy Hale, 312-870-6926. 312-870-6926. I look forward to talking with you about your case. July 11, 2013, at around 5.50 p.m., Gary Police 911 Center received a call a reference to a gunshot victim. When officers arrived, they found Anthony Green, who had a parent gunshot wound to the back of the head, and paramedics at that time could do nothing to save Mr. Green. If anybody has any information out there, please, I'm begging you to please say something. A person who does a crime like that is not supposed to be walking the streets. So anyone with information like that, of course, you turn a person in. The not knowing is more than I can bear and to know that they're still out there and they're free to do it again. If they did it in broad daylight, I don't think that's the first time they did it. And if they did it once, they'll do it again. And I don't want it to be anybody else's family. To, to have justice for TJ would mean everything for my family. If we could just see the, the people who did it and just even hear the reason, you know, I feel like that would just lift such a burden off of our family. We're, we're basically looking for the help of the community. Anybody with inf any information that can help us lead to this, this man was an innocent victim. This was a very senseless crime. We have no idea why it happened. Uh, Mr. Uh, Green wasn't involved in any criminal activity. For all I know, this could be a random shooting for a gang initiation. Turn yourself in. If you murdered my son, turn yourself in one of the three should be able to say, grow a conscience and just say, hey, this was wrong. If anybody had any information about the death of TJ, I'd love it if they could just come forward and kind of just tell me, if they could just communicate with my family and just kind of give us a little insight. We'd really appreciate it. If he can do this to an innocent young man who fixed him food, at a hot dog stand. Then you turn around and you shoot him in the back of the, head, of the head while he's sitting between my two great nieces. Does not need to be walking the streets because if he did it to my innocent young man, he'd do it to someone else's. The suspect is 5'8", maybe 160 to 180, and he had a very distinct tattoo above his right eyebrow 
The other two are suspects for the fact that they were with him, but from their actions, they might not have known what he was going to do and have no idea what he did. We don't know that for sure. We have reason to believe that all three individuals, especially the shooter, are in the Chicago land area, possibly in Chicago. The individual with the DNA that came back is one Alfred Stanley. We are interested in finding Alfred Stanley because he can possibly provide a name of the shooter and that way we can, we, all we need is a photo for a photo lineup and I am very confident, like I said before, that the victim's brother and the owner will pick him out. How can you live with yourself and know you know this person, know that this person share with you this is what they've done and you don't turn them in, even if you do it anonymously. Everybody said the guy never said anything to him. Even my niece said he didn't say anything. He was just pacing for a minute and then he just decided to come around the back of him and just shoot him in the back of the head. I just really would like justice on behalf of my family for my brother TJ. This man was an innocent victim and uh, this case needs to be brought to justice. So we are looking for any help you can give us. Please contact the Gary Police Department, the Violent Crime Squad at area code 219-881-1210. If you have immediate information and want it to remain confidential, you can contact me. My name is Sergeant William Fazekas at 219-299-1611. A part of you is gone, and it's so unbelievable. It's like a dream. So I'm sure he'd take me on a few trips because by now he'd be a truck driver. I just feel like we would have a lot of catching up to do, a lot of traveling to do. And just tell him I love him. There's not a day goes by that I don't think about him. It's not a day. The cases featured on tonight's episode remain unsolved, and we need your help. If you have any information on tonight's episode or any of the cases featured on the show, please give the detectives a call. We need our communities to come together so we can take back our streets and make our neighborhoods safe again.